one. It's Making Colors. And I'm going to do a quick video that I have seen a lot of other people do. So I'm going to do it as well. And basically what this is is just a video showing you my personal necessity items that I like to have when I'm coloring. So I suggest that everybody has items either like these or these exact ones because it really enhances your coloring. It's not much, it's not too costly, but it does help you have um, much more professional looking pictures and they're just some great items to have if you're really into coloring. So this is my little cup I keep them in, but I'm going to dump it out. Sorry, I've got two of those. So what I have here is, first to start off, I've got my little Derwent pencil sharpener, which I love. Um, I usually use these specifically for my Derwents and my Black Widow pencil set. Not my Prismas, it's a little too sharp on them. If you're familiar with Prisma pencils, they're very soft cord and they fall apart easily, which is why I have my Fabri-Castell, which this is what I use for both my Polychromos pencils, which fit into here, my Gold Faber Fabri-Castell pencils, which also fit into this hole, and then the Color Grip, oddly enough, is the size that fits most of my Prismas, so that's what I use for my Prismas. I am not sure if you can buy this individually. If I find a link for it, I will put it in the description. I got this with my Polychromo set. So, like I said, these are preferably for the Black Widows and the Derwent pencils, and these are for the Polychromos, Gold Faber, and my Prismas. Then I have my Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. I also have my Uniball Signo Gold Gel Pen. These are relatively cheap, $3 or so a piece. I'll put links in the descriptions, of course. These I particularly use for stars, which is why I got the gold, is because I like to have, like, when I make galaxies, I like to have different colored stars, because when you look up at the sky, you see different colored stars. And then the white you can use for anything. You can use it on leaves, flower petals, anything you kind of want to give a shimmering reflection to or polka dots on dresses, um, details in eyes and faces and lips when you're going like coloring faces, so, like um, Hannah Lynn's coloring books. I use these a lot in those. Then we've got my Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. I actually bought myself the wrong size, but this is the uh, 2.5 by 5 millimeter. It pops out. And I don't know how to put that back in, but this is good for details, very small details when you're trying to erase. It does come with refills when you buy it. I wanted to get the fine tipped point, but I accidentally bought this one, but it works just as good. I just use the corner of it to kind of help me erase. And then I'm sure you've seen this. It's only $8. The Derwent battery operated eraser is my go-to. This works great. The only downside is it's a pretty thick nib. So it is hard if you're trying to just erase a teeny tiny little mess up. That's what I use this for because I can control it. With this one, it's good for erasing a big portion. Um, a lot of people, this is up for debate, a lot of people don't like to use the Derwent blender or any blender pencil. Um, they are just really good at blending their colors together, especially Prismas. I personally, especially when it comes to using Fabri-Castell pencils, I prefer to use a blender pencil. And for that, I use a Derwent blender pencil. It's very cheap. You can get, I believe it's, you get two of them and a burnisher pencil, which I've never actually used. I just use the blender. But you get all those in a pack for like seven or eight bucks. So I highly recommend having one if you're like me and you have trouble blending your colors the way you want. And then I've seen a lot of different people do a lot of different techniques to this. I've got your cheap $2 e.l.f. total face brush. And what I actually use this for is when you're coloring and you get the pencil, it, it kind of, you want to swipe it. But a lot of times, especially with Prismas, that will smear. And I'll give you a demonstration of that. Get a piece of paper here. Actually, here's one we can use. Paint card, but see, see the when you're trying to color really thick, you see all that. Now, on a normal piece of paper, this is just a little paint card I was using, but 
if you swipe that, you're going to smudge and you don't want to. And you can get special brush brushes and I've seen all kinds of different brushes that artists use. I prefer this. It's cheap, it's soft and fluffy, and you just go like that. Just how, see how simple that is? And then you're not smudging. This isn't going to really smudge, but on a normal coloring book, you don't want to smudge your color. So that is just my basic what I would call a starter pack basically for if you're going to color what you would like to have in your collection. I'm going to put links in the description to all these that I can find on Amazon. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find this, but I'll find something like it. I just got this at Walmart for two bucks. It's the cheapest one you can get. It's just for dusting off your stuff. And that is everything. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on Making Colors.